We had just been talking about this guy, Ari Nagel. There he is on the front page of the New York Post. Uh, they nicknamed him the Spermidator. He uh, donates his own sperm for couples who need another option. And it's not done in the lab. It's not done through a sperm bike. He goes into the bathroom at a Target or someplace like that. Or he does it the old-fashioned way, by the way. And the woman is right outside and uh, right away inserts the fluid uh, into the cervix. I think that's how it works, I think. Yeah, well, we're going to meet Ari right Right now, nice to have you here on Good Day, New York. Thanks so much. I'm trying to switch it from sperminator to inseminator. I feel like it's a little classier. <laughs> okay. yeah. How many kids so far? Uh, 22. And do you have any uh, cooking right I, now? I, I got one in the oven, and then I got a text yesterday that someone's throwing up. So that's always a good sign, you know? Oh, it was only a couple of days ago, so it's a little that, early. Where is that person Where does that person live? That, uh, that, uh, not town, uptown. Harlem. Mm -hmm. Why not do this through a sperm bank? But, you know, the truth is, is that uh, you, the sperm bank, uh, a lot of the women that came to me, they already exhausted their funds at a sperm bank. And then they came to me after they exhausted all their funds and they didn't have any money left to try. So uh, a lot of the times uh, they don't want to go to a sperm bank because then they never get to meet uh, the father. And because um, it's anonymous when you go through a uh, sperm bank. And I have relationships with the kids. I see the kids sometimes on the weekends. And wow. I can go to Father's Day events and things like that. And then, of course, it's better for the moms because they get to meet me. Whereas in a sperm bank, they see a baby picture. If you want to see an adult picture, you have to buy the photo package. It's a real scam. So Ari, how do you how do you go about this? How do you decide whether you're going to uh, go into the bathroom somewhere or do it the old-fashioned way? I don't decide. In the end, it's always the mom who decides or the prospective mom. So, so they choose if they want to do it the old-fashioned way or if they want to go to a clinic, then we'll go to a clinic. Or if they want to just do it uh, amongst ourselves, and I'll put it in the and you're totally of, I mean it's up to you too. You're, you're, but I, you're, I'm flexible all day. You're whatever flexible. they feel comfortable with. How did you get yes. into this and why? Uh, you know, it just felt right, you know, uh, the first uh, two times it was a, a single woman who was uh, 40 or something having difficulty meeting someone on the Upper West Side. The other one was a lesbian couple and they needed help to grow their family. And it just felt right. I'm not talking about during the act that felt right. That we know feels good. It's before when they were asking me and telling me their story and then during and then of course after seeing the positive pregnancy test, seeing how happy the children were, it just felt the, the whole process I felt comfortable with and it was very rewarding. So Ari, um, Ari have you been... I think you're, uh, you're, are you doing anything right now, like in the next week or two, or are you helping anybody out? Uh, yes, of yes. course. I have a woman flying in from Ohio this weekend. Uh, um, she wanted me to come to Ohio, but I said it's just easier if you come here, so and she's landing tomorrow, and, and so how she's is ovulating. That, and how is that going to work? You know, it's up to her, so she's going to eventually decide whatever she feels comfortable with. You're separated now, right? Uh, that's right. Yeah, you can't really do what I'm doing and be in a relationship. It doesn't work. Now, the thing that I was surprised about, uh, you just hand it over in what kind of receptacle? Uh, sometimes they'll use a soft cup. It's something that women use for their period, and they'll be able to put it inside them. And then sometimes it's in a regular cup, and they'll use something like a turkey baster and put it inside. And then sometimes I'll mail it. I'll just FedEx it to them if, I, if they live out of state. How long does it last? Uh, you know, it will last if you mail it. So I'll mix it with like egg yolk buffer and it extends it. So I'll overnight it in maybe 12 hours and they'll get it later. But it can probably last up to 24, 36 hours. Inside the body, it lasts longer. Wow. So, okay. I I'm curious about your, your background because you teach, uh, you're a CUNY professor of mm -hmm. math in Muncie, New York. Well, in Brooklyn, but in I Brooklyn. grew up in Muncie. And Muncie is a very orthodox um, very religious area. It, Were you brought up that so. way? Yes, I was. My, my family is very, very traditional. Uh, but the truth is, is that in Muncie, it's actually normal to have 20 kids. It's like Bar Park. They just, everyone on the block has a lot of children. Again, you don't charge anything. Because of your time and, uh, you know, some resources are being expended. You don't charge anything? Uh, I never charged anything in the end. What about for the FedEx? I mean, seriously, they, like they, little they, they, expenses like that. Sure, no, they'll send me a label and I wouldn't actually incur any expense. But the truth is, any money that I take from them is really, in the end, just taking away money from the kids. And in the end, I'd rather they just keep the money for the children. But Father's Day, I got the Starbucks gift card and the Target gift card. I think some of them had some good sense of humor. Are you, aren't you being sued by maybe one or two of the kids? Or? Uh, yes, a couple of the moms got greedy, even though our original agreement wasn't, uh, you know, that I would provide financially. Some of them did go back on their word and uh, sued me financially but the truth is even if I had uh, money I'd be giving it to my kids anyway so I don't feel as the money's going to my kids so you agree me feel as bad. You have three kids of the kids that you've sired? Uh, both. You have three children. Uh, three children that I'm a full-time co-parent to and then the others I have limited involvement uh, sometimes once a month sometimes once a week some I never met. And this is not a contract this is just a handshake and hello uh, all verbal nothing uh, written right nothing legal. Uh, that's correct. Now you know what
When I hear you say it, it seems kind of, you know, not as weird as when I read about it in the New York Post. Well, Although think, it is a little, yeah. I don't know. The Post focused a lot on the methodology, but I think if you met anyone who met the kids and met the parents and heard their stories, I think inevitably would have been a lot more comfortable with the story of how I'm able to grow families and really what an idea of a modern family and what it looks like. I, because the truth is, is that whether it's the 1950s or 2016, I think family is really the people around you and it can look a million different ways that love you and care about you. I know, but I think it's kind of sad. I mean, a lot of these kids don't really get to know you. Well, a lot of times the option B would be an anonymous sperm donor where they would never get to know their father. So any limited and positive role that I can play is still better than no role at all. And a lot of them, the women that reached out to me were 40 years old. They don't even have an option to give the child a sibling. But now they have siblings that they can get together with. I have a two-year-old birthday party coming up, and I'll have a lot of the other two-year-olds there uh, enjoying and celebrating and bonding with each other. And these women, by the way, uh, they're saving a lot of money. The sperm bank option costs... Uh... Thousands. Thousands of bucks. Thousands, yes. And then, of course, they never get to meet who they're donating to. They're relying on some intern at the fertility clinic that they did the background and they know who it is. Your oldest is, again, 12? Uh, 13 last week. So you've been doing this a long time. You know what you're doing. It, well, the oldest wasn't a donation. The donations process started around nine years ago. Huh. So they're eight years old. So when you uh, have all your children around you, are, are you a little overwhelmed? Uh, I, I don't have all 22 together because they're all over the country, all over the world. So I have one living at a farm in Missouri on over 100 acres and then I have one in Virginia and I'm going to Tampa next weekend. I'll see my daughter there. And is that kind of, does that feed your ego to some degree? And I don't blame you. I mean, you got, you got kids all over the world. It's truly an honor to be chosen. It's really one of the most important decisions that they're making and that I never uh, underestimate that the fact that they reached out to me for help and I'm able to play a role in growing their families. Is a nine-year-old good at math? Uh, yeah, You're a math professor, right? Yeah. Math professor? Uh, I'm, a, I'm a math professor. I teach math and computer science. And uh, yeah, they're, uh, hopefully they'll all be good at math. That's so funny. Has the city reached out to you and said, hey, let's look into this. This this is, doesn't sound kosher. Uh, yeah, so the, the New York State Health Department reached okay. out to me. They asked me to cease and desist distributing human tissue and asked me to apply for a license. But I'm not 100% clear what I'm doing uh, that would be illegal. Um, they suggested you cease and desist. It wasn't an order, right? They well, just when I emailed them for clarification about what exactly that I'm doing and I start to give them specific acts of things that I do, uh, which one of those would be illegal, they said, well, on second thought, we'll just reserve the right to, you know, pursue civil action, but what, everything that you're doing up until now seems to be... Hmm. Hey, it's a free country, man. Seriously. It's, it's an infringement on all men's and women's reproductive rights, so it's certainly... I'm not going to take advantage of that right <laughs> myself, <laughs> yeah. that, but... Yeah. Well, well already we're consenting adults. Yeah. You know, and the kids are happy and healthy, thank God. 22 healthy, happy kids. Do you have any plans on retiring? Yes, I'm 41, uh, so I think I'm not going to do this when I'm 50, so maybe another few years. Huh, huh. If people want to get in touch with you. <laughs> yeah, they've, been, they've been reaching out to me from all over. Well, Facebook, the, how do you... I was on the CBS show, The Doctors, on Tuesday, and then, of course, I get a flood of emails from all over the country yeah. and from all over the world. Uh, yesterday, I got a, a WhatsApp message from Vietnam, and it's, so it's been all over the world. But, I mean, okay, we see you on TV, but how? I don't think we... Is your Facebook? You want to give your email address just in case? I, I don't need any more uh, clientele, okay, but can, thank you. You can figure it out <laughs> online. <laughs> That's right. Ari Nagel, my name. You can just search me on Facebook. I add everybody. Okay. <laughs> that is so funny. Well, anyway, so nice to meet you in person. Okay. All the best to you and your children. Terrific. Thanks so much for having Thanks. me. Wow. Laura. Next, next time I'll bring a baby. Um, That'll be great. <laughs> See, we got meatloaf. The singer was wild back then. <laughs>